right, so what we're going to start off with is our hydrophobic pathways. But what we've got to be really mindful of throughout all of this is that we're thinking about it in the context of signal transduction. So as we go through, we've got to section this into three main stages, reception, transduction, and response. We're going to start off, obviously, therefore, with our reception of a hydrophobic messenger molecule. Um, we have to know it more generally, but the main example that's provided typically in questions in VCE is through steroids or the movement of steroids across a membrane or um, to be received by a cell. So what I've got here in this diagram is, of course, a steroid. Hopefully, at this point, you're aware that steroids are hydrophobic because they themselves are made up of lipid derivatives. And so that means that they are, of course, lipophilic. As they are hormones, examples of hormones too, they're going to come through the bloodstream. As they're lipophilic and most of our blood is made up of water, they've got to have a carrier protein, which ensures that they remain soluble and therefore can get around the body. Once they get to the cell, though, they're going to come up to the cell membrane. That's the first section that they're going to arrive at. If we zoom into this section here, so we think also about our area of study one um, in RVC bio course, then you hopefully are already aware of this structure. What I'm obviously drawing here is our phospholipid bilayer. We have our phosphate heads, our lipid tails, and this is according to the fluid mosaic model. So these um, phospholipids are not going to be static in this arrangement, but what is always going to be um, apparent is that the center section, the center section made up of lipid tails, is going to be hydrophobic. Okay, the lipid insert, um, inside section is going to be hydrophobic. These phosphate heads are the opposite in that these sections, they are hydrophilic. This means particularly because all of the area inside and outside the cell, so both the intracellular and extracellular environment, is predominantly made up of water. The real question is whether a substance can move directly through the membrane. It therefore has to be hydrophobic to do so. So to be able to move directly through this lipid bilayer, it has to be hydrophobic. This means our steroids, for example here, um, is able to move directly through the membrane. And that is one of the key differences between a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic pathway. So this messenger molecule can move through the um, phospholipid bilayer as it's attracted to those lipid tails. And when it gets through, it's going to diffuse and move around the cell until it finds its complementary receptor protein. When we're talking about receptors or proteins in general, the complementary nature of them is going to be that tertiary slash quaternary structure. That's the part of the protein that is going to attach to the molecule, and it has to have its amino acid R groups in an arrangement that is complementary to the size, shape, and charge of this messenger. So we then get here our ligand receptor complex. All that complex means is that they have come together, they are now as one, and when that happens, there is actually a change in shape. Okay, so there's a conformational change. And that will again be our tertiary or our quaternary structure, and that results in the exposure of this DNA binding region. Okay. This occurs on all hydrophobic pathways. Your messenger molecule moves directly through the plasma membrane. It's then received, so reception occurs when it comes into contact with its complementary receptor. There's a conformational change, and that exposes a DNA binding region. At this point, we move into transduction. So when the changes start occurring in the cell to come up to that ultimate response. What happens in this case, as we've got this DNA um, binding region is this molecule then moves into the nucleus. What happens is gene expression and hopefully through area study one you've already learned the steps and processes of this. So transcription, RNA processing and then translation at the end. If you want a video on this let me know um, but otherwise this is assumed knowledge at this point in the course so I'm going to move straight on to what's the product of this. We move through, our mRNA is transcribed by our ribosome over here a free ribosome, it's not embedded in an endoplasmic reticulum, and then we end up with our polypeptide chain. That polypeptide chain will have to undergo folding until eventually it becomes my very crude globular functional protein. And that functional protein for this hydrophobic pathway is our response. 
if we think about this process, our response is always it coming in contact with its receptor and the direct change that occurs. The transduction is then everything that occurs between there and the point where your response or your final product is produced, which in our hydrophobic pathways is the protein which is coded for by the DNA for which the receptor is complementary. Keep in mind here that we actually could have downplayed or um, repressed the expression of that gene as well, rather than increasing the concentration or the production of that protein. And it's really important, therefore, to read through the context of the question when you're given one such as this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hold out for part two of the hydrophilic pathway.